Uh, my Cooler Master Octane keyboard. It's pretty much the only thing really remaining from when I started this video series that came from my old setup. I mean, I already treated the mouse in. Computer's done. But this is going to be replaced, and that day is today. Yeah, I've had this keyboard for about two years. It still works well, but it's going to go hand it down. Um, mainly, I'm giving this to my father because they do they would benefit from the light up keys on this, and um, you know, sure it doesn't have too many colors to it, but um, you know it's. You know, it does have some features into it. No individual lighting zones. And this is membrane. No, no mechanical switches in here. Um, I'm going to go clean this up. Um, take the keys out. And I'll wash them off. And scrape out the, um, you know, the lower tray. Because this, has, this is all in a white plastic background. And I'm just going to clean that all out. You know, get a couple Q-tips and... You know, make this thing almost like new again, which is pretty nice. So um, I will miss this keyboard. I mean, it's you know, it's pretty damn good, you know, all things considered. But um, I'm going to be replacing it today. And what hey, you ask, I'm going to be replacing it with, with one of these. Yes, the Red Dragon Indra Mechanical Gaming Keyboard RGB. Yep, it is high speed, high control, high response. It has full without conflict. I don't know what the hell that is. Um, it has multimedia keys. Um, turn off autofocus. As it wants to really be a pain in the neck day. Okay, um, it does have a gold plated. Um, so I get a better light and see if I could get that to focus. Focus, yeah, there we go. Uh, no, no cooperation. Come on, autofocus. Come on, we can do this. Okay, there we go. No, no, not having any, but it is gold plated. Uh, USB connector and it has Windows Unlock. I'll just read off the details from the back just in case the autofocus just doesn't want to uh, cooperate and apparently it doesn't. It's probably because it's too dark, but uh, here's the most of the back. It does have my address on it. It's on the back, they, uh, this just came like the, to me like this. So, and um, but it does have um, you know some details on the back. Um, according to the information, it has. Uh, yeah, keystrokes, blah blah blah, features high precision machinery manufacturer, uh, double injection keycaps, standard keys, full key conflict, spill proof, which is very nice, and um, yeah, Windows keys are disabled. I'm really sorry you couldn't read that, but um, apparently the autofocus is really having a fit today. So, uh,. There's the sticker. I was going to have to place it like that. And um, I just decided to use this with a, open this with the nudge of a screwdriver. Because, um, you know, there isn't much need to get a knife for this. This is a very simple operation. And, um, let's see if I could get it open. I do not know where the paring knife is at. Might have to get it at another angle. This is not plastic, though. I think this is like a... The, uh... Tape is not... It's like paper tape, almost. There we go. I got it. Got it on one end. Okay. Let's turn this around. Cover that up. Again, my address is on the back of this thing. Don't want that.
bit more fiddling, but it is indeed open. Now, up here inside, if I can figure out how to open it. And that might be a little bit of a trick, but no, no, I found a tab. I found a tab. That's a struggle. What else is new? Now, can I, like, is it like a slide out? I have no idea. It seems to be a slide out function. I saw out of other videos on unboxing this, but it didn't seem like it was it was a pull out. That's why I opened up the other side, just in case. Let me see if I can nudge it out of here. Hold on a sec. Ah, there we go. Do apologize for that. But there indeed it is. Like, how do you give you a little protector for the USB cable there? This is not a braided cable, but it does come with a nice uh, Velcro tie. And, uh... Let's see, the keyboard itself here in a minute. But, uh... Keycap puller. This is the uh, instructions, and uh, uh, customer experience. Okay, change. Are okay? I have no idea what the hell that means, but I will actually consult the man manual for this because um, I do know there's some functionality in the keyboard itself. But uh, let's grab the keyboard. Let's take a look. Now, this does have a wrist rest, by the way. Um, let's see if we could get that open, though. Oh, it's actually open. Okay. It has a wrist rest. Um, it's plastic, no rubberization. It's got a little pattern on it. A little bit of a techno pattern on it, but I will not be using this right now. This could go off to the side. I probably put it in the box when I'm done here. But, uh, let's take a look at this thing. I'll put things to the side here in a second. So we take a look at the keyboard. I'm not worried about it. It's decided to flush down on the key, on the desk there, but it's not a problem. It's nice and clucky. Oh yeah, here are the multimedia keys. Back, forward, play, pause, mute, etc. And it has um, macro keys. That's actually pretty nice. I have felt up mechanical keys in the past. But I've never actually used one. Um, this should be a experience. Now, what I'm going to have to do, though, is I'm going to have to spend some time with this keyboard, get used to it, and, you know, figure out the functions, you know. And then, when I'm done with that, I'll tell you my experiences with this. But, i got to say, it's not as loud as I thought. I mean, compare that to my memory. It's a little bit louder, but it's crisp. It's a crisp sound. So, I'm going to hook this sucker up, make sure it works okay. Hopefully it didn't get damaged by me or in transit. And, uh, we'll, uh, 
Let's take a good look at this, though, real fast. That is a metal background, by the way. Metal up, upper plate. There's the logo with little feet. And you can see where the uh, wrist rest will clip in. Man, let's go. Let's give this uh, puppy a good try. I'm gonna try this out for about a week or so. So this will be a two-parter, sort of. Well, for me, for you, it'll be literally a second. But for me, it'll be about a week for now. Um, but yeah, let's give this thing a good try, and I'll show off the lighting effects. I'm gonna have to learn that because this has um, unbuilt lighting controls. No, no software needed for this thing. Which is nice. I wish more companies would do that. I'm looking at you, Razor. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's give this puppy a try. I'll uh, see you here literally in a second. Although, like I said, for me it'll be about a week, so I can get used to this and uh, you know give you my thoughts. So see you then. Okay. So it's been about a week since I got the um, Red Dragon Indra Gaming Mechanical Keyboard. And uh, before I get onto the review portion, I like to discuss the features of this keyboard, which is uh, quite a few features. Uh, yeah, this, this keyboard is chock full of lots of cool little features inside of it, and I'm going to show off those features right now. So uh, first thing let's talk about is these buttons up here, G1. G2, G3, G4, G5, and REC. Okay, these are macro keys. G1 through 5 are macro keys. And if you don't know what a macro key is, it's basically a set of uh, keyboard commands you could assign to only one single button. So say if you needed to hit uh, the command control, control alt F5 or something like that, you could assign that with only one single button as opposed to having to hit uh, those buttons each and every time you need to perform that set of commands. So, um, yeah, that's actually a pretty cool feature. Uh, this is handy for people who like to use um, um, Microsoft spreadsheets, you know, Excel, and people who like advanced um, multitasking. You know, this is a very good feature to have. And sure, the buttons are a little bit small, but the fact that this feature is here is a big, big bonus. So to record the macro, I'm going to hit this button here, which is to record, and the lights are going to flash. And we're going to hit the G1 key, and um, let's type in the word moose. And now the word moose is recorded onto our button. So when we hit our G1 key, it should come up with the word moose each and every time. There you go. So hit the G1 button, and the word moose shall appear each and every time the button is hit. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now to remove a macro, I'm going to hit the record button, and I'm going to hit the G1 key again, and then hit record one more time, and now when I hit the um, G1 key, nothing's going to happen. That's because the macro has been removed from the keyboard. And yes, the keyboard does have a uh, quite limited, but still pretty cool amount of memory on it. Um, enough to record several macros, you know, five of them. And, you know, the fact it even goes up to even two is uh, quite amazing for a keyboard of this price point. Uh, to remove all macros, if you had all of these keys programmed for macros, and you wanted to start all over again, you have to hit function and then record and then wait for these lights to flash and then all of the macros built into the com uh, keyboard that you created will be erased so very handy next uh, let's talk about these buttons up here this is a back button this is a play pause this is a forward button mute volume down volume up those are media keys uh, media keys is something I do look into when I buy a keyboard. 
Um, I do like having dedicated media keys in a keyboard. It's just something I like having. Um, I can live without them, and yes, there are keyboards out there that have the media keys built into the function keys, but at the same time, I really don't like that. I have to make sure that I switch out of the media mode and put it back into um, regular F1, F2, F3 function mode um, each and every time I want to do something. You know, say if I wanted to use F11 instead of a, um, F11 being full screen, that would be, oh, play a track or something like that. You know, um, there are a lot of keyboard manufacturers who don't give you dedicated media keys. Hello, Razer. Um, and it does put me off of them a little bit. So, um, yeah, I really wish more companies would put um, media keys onto a keyboard. Um, it's just something very handy and something I really like. But the one thing about this keyboard that really makes it makes it um, stand out is the lighting effects. Now, the cool thing about the lighting effects on this keyboard is that you don't need third-party software to do that with. Again, hello, Razer. Yep, um, you see here, you have the function key, and up here you have these six buttons all labeled one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not too sure if you can see them or not, but they do exist. Those are things. So um, each one of those six keys right there will perform a, a different um, color setting. So function plus insert is color fade mode. Now color fade mode will just go through all of the colors that this keyboard can actually perform. This is the full RGB mode of the keyboard. <clears throat> and um, basically it makes sure that you know you can get the color that you want. So if you wanted to have orange, well this is pretty much the way you want it. Um, there's no other way to access the color orange, uh, for example. or um, in a dark purple. You can't do it any other way outside of this mode here. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a bummer, but um, it is still full RGB. You can see that its color spectrum is still pretty, pretty good, uh, despite that the fact that um, natively these keys cannot really do these uh, colors like orange here. Um, you know, it really can't do that color natively. Same thing with this uh, really dark purple color, it really can't do that, so if I want to lock that into the keyboard, well that's the only way to do it. You know, um, or let's get a better color here and uh, see if we could get a, another color that um, this keyboard does not really support. Um, let's try... Um, let's give it a minute. Let's try this color here. It's not quite cyan, but it's like a slightly brighter blue. It's almost a baby blue to the naked eye. It's not quite here on the camera. But yeah, that's the only way you could really get this shade of blue. So, um, still though, full RGB regardless. This still has a full color spectrum built into it. You just can't access it directly. Now, the next thing I'm going to show off is Function Plus Home. Now, Function Plus Home actually has three features built into it. So function plus home once is ripple mode. Now ripple mode will originate all kinds of colors straight up from the uh, letter O here. So it's almost like if you hit the letter O, it's causing you know like a ripple effect all across the whole keyboard. Um, it's pretty, but it's not exactly all that impressive. Still though, pretty cool effect. Now function plus home twice is well color change mode. And as you can see, it's jutting through the colors that it supports. So let's go by the order. Red, blue, purple, green, yellow, cyan, white quote unquote, and back to red. So um, yeah, that's basically all this keyboard really fully supports by default but like I said it does support other colors it just doesn't do those other colors by this mode here if you want orange you're gonna have to go into the other mode 
uh, which is a bit of a shame, but hey, you know, that's fine. Uh, but function plus home three times, however, hold on a minute, is uh, color change mode. So if you um, want to have your keyboard purple, green, blue, whatever, uh, function plus left or right here will change that color for you as long as you hit the home button first. So um, that's basically how I got this uh, keyboard to um, stay solid green. It's the easiest way to do that. It's the easiest way to hit a solid color, which is fine. Um, next up though is function plus page up, which is uh, color fade mode. Um, basically it will jut through the various colors and f fading in from one color into the next as you can plainly see right there just fading into purple then red then quote white unquote quote quote um, yeah t true white is not exactly a color this keyboard can really perform but it's still okay um, still this is a really really cool effect it just shows sh shows you the various colors um, one by one and a cool fading effect so that's actually pretty cool but next is function plus delete function plus delete is rainbow mode um, rainbow mode's pretty nice it's nice and pretty function plus end however is color customization mode meaning I could customize each and every key on the keyboard to be the color I wish um, as you clearly see I decked this uh, keyboard out to look like the American flag for 4th of July, which is pretty cool. Uh, so in order to get your key to light up the color that you want it to, you have to hit function plus end, and you see the lights light up up there. You have to hit your key to go to the color that you want. So if I wanted to make this key blue, for example, this key... Um, purple and uh, this key uh, let's see green I can do so and in order to make it stick I hit the end key however let's change that back to the way I had it because I did like my American flag design here so let's switch this back to quote unquote white and these red and it shall be locked into the keyboard and this color pattern will stay until you change it. Pretty neat. And yeah, the keyboard does have built-in memory inside of it, so uh, pretty cool feature to have there. So it will remember all of your colors, so if you need to leave your po power off for a few days, this keyboard will keep this color pattern in mind, or whatever other color pattern that you so desire, which is really neat. Now function plus page down is, well, what I call ghost mode. So when I hit a key, it will light up for a few seconds. In order to change the color, I have to hit function play page down one more time, and it will change it to red. Now it defaults to the color quote unquote white. For me it looks very pink, but whatever. Uh, but function plus page down again will again change the color, now it's blue. So a very, very, very cool uh, feature there. I usually leave it on uh, function plus home, one, two, three, there we go, oop, I didn't do it right, one, two, three, oh, it's kind of hard to do this with one hand, I'm going to get this here in a second here, sorry. Let's get it back to the green. There we go. Sorry about that. But yeah, if you don't hit the uh, button combination just right, it will not work. Um, since I'm doing this with only one hand, yeah, that's why it's a little bit tricky. But I can do it. It's just a little bit awkward. That's what's throwing me off. Uh, still, though, pretty cool feature. So... Um, let's talk about the keyboard switches. Uh, these are not Cherry MX switches. These are a off-brand Cherry uh, switches. Uh, now, Red Dragon call, calls them 
cherry greens. It's actually cherry blues. Um, but these are cherry blue clowns. Uh, they're nice and tactile. They're not terribly loud, but they're loud enough. I'll probably buy some O-rings for this keyboard to make it a little bit quieter. Um, but it does feel nice. The build quality does seem pretty fantastic, all things considered. You know, the fact that it has a aluminum, ba aluminum background is a big bonus, meaning it's not going to get damaged very easy. Um, you know, makes it feel a little bit more substantial. You know, it's not solid plastic like my other keyboard. So it does feel um, something of quality. And um, that's a um, really good uh, indication of how I feel about this uh, keyboard. It seems very well built for something that's only $65. It feels like a professional uh, mechanical gaming keyboard. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels real and solidly built. Um, these are Automo Blues, by the way. Um, I was able to figure out that these are cherry off-brand um, Automo switches. So, um, if you're familiar with that, well, there you go. And if you're not familiar with that, well, you learn something every day. Basically, these are uh, based off Cherry MX Blues, which are the most common uh, form of mechanical switches you find for keyboards nowadays. So, um, you know, in each color designates what sound it makes and how it performs. Blues tend to be very clicky, but also very responsive. So, and they also provide very good tactile uh, feedback for the user. And these keys themselves are replaceable with Cherry compatible keycaps, so I can replace each and every one of these keycaps if I so desired. Um, so you could buy a whole bunch of keycaps and replace each and every one of these if you so wanted to. I might just do that. I haven't quite uh, decided yet, but uh, you know, it's something to think about down the road. So um, with all that said, um, however, let's get into the proper review. So let's go over the positives, which there are many. Firstly, the amount of customization you can do with this keyboard. It's insane. Without any driver software or anything like that, this keyboard can do a whole lot straight out of the box, you know, without any hand-holding. Again, yeah, that's a big bonus. The fact that this keyboard can do everything you want it to without extra software is a big bonus. The fact that it has, um, you know, these macro keys is a big bonus. Sure, they're not the biggest ones, and I'm sure there are keyboards with better macro keys out there, but hey, you know, I've never used that before, and this is a good way for me to get used to that idea. You know, I'm probably not going to be using those for gaming. I'm probably going to stick with the Steam controller for now until I actually get the keyboard and mouse thing done. I'm still getting used to, you know, keyboard and mouse gaming control, so, you know, coming from the long line of using a console for my primary primary source of gaming is uh, going to be a hindrance for a little while, but I'll get there eventually. And the fact that I could color change the keys to whatever color I want kind of will help me out with that. Kind of like teaching me typing all over again. <laughs> so that's actually pretty cool. So, um, yeah, um, pro number two is build quality. This thing seems fantastically built. It feels like a tank. It doesn't feel cheap. There's no bending here. There's no flexing in the build whatsoever. Uh, aluminum, aluminum top plate is a big bonus feature. Um, the switches themselves do feel solidly built. I'm sure that these are probably not as good as the Cherry switches, but Cherry switches tend to be quite pricey. So, you no. Know, the fact that these um, seem to work pretty well, gives me a good indicator of how things work. I, cons I consider this a breaking-in mechanical keyboard because I've never owned one, so if any reason this keyboard does decide to totally die out rather than just the switches themselves, at least it gives me an indication of where I can go. You know, spending $68, $64 on a cheap mechanical ge gaming keyboard is a good idea. Um, it saves me about $100 or so and paying for a keyboard that would be twice as much of twice as much expensive, but at the same time, um, I wouldn't know the feel of it. You know, I'd rather learn the feel of a, a mechanical uh, keyboard with this method. 
you know, something to start me off with, and then down the road, maybe I'll actually use true charity switches and stuff like that, but that day is not today. Um, so, pro number three is, well, um, the media keys, I do like that. Um, the macro keys are also included into that. So, um, macro keys and media keys, you know, functions in general are basically all one huge super category. I cannot stress how much uh, good this keyboard is in terms of, um, you know, the amount of uh, things it gives you for the amount of money that you pay for it. And the fact that it has so many inbuilt features is a big, big plus. So, um, you know, it has all this going on for it, but what is, it, what is wrong with this keyboard? Well, actually, hardly anything. I mean, they give you a well-built keyboard, they give you um, function keys that you normally don't encounter unless you pay hundreds of dollars, um, it gives you color customization that is normally done by third-party software. Um, but if there's only one, well, two main cons I could throw about this is this thing, which is the instruction booklet. Yeah, uh, the first con against this keyboard is since it is the instruction booklet. Um, I had to work this thing out a little bit because the English in here is not exactly, well, stellar. It's easily seen to be something that was originally in Chinese, and they really sloppily translated it into um, English. It is a very, very, well, interesting translation. I mean, it is readable, but um, to figure it out is a little bit, well, head tilting. It's not impossible to read, but it can throw uh, somebody off who is looking for proper written English instructions to something. Um, that's why this whole phrase up here really threw me off. Change rec key at right side for better customer's experience. Again, you're not one, you're wondering, what in the heck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> you know, it's such a um, odd thing to throw onto a little um, paper, you know. That might as well be written in pure Chinese right there, because that makes zero sense to me. Um, so if it's the first major con of this keyboard is the really poor English on the um, instruction manual and the little paper that they give you. And con number two is the wrist rest. The wrist rest is really, really, well, crap is probably the kindest word I can say about that wrist rest. It is abysmal. I would not use it if I didn't have a built-in wrist rest. Um, if, I, if, if I didn't have this, uh, you know, even though this paint is coming off, this uh, texture is coming off, I would still um, rather use this than that crappy thing. If I had to get another computer desk, which is probably going to be the next thing on my list, I'm probably going to get a proper wrist rest for it, a pro proper separate one that would be infinitely better than that thing any day of the week. Um, really, it's just a, a sheet of plastic with a bunch of cool designs on it. That's all it really is. So, calling it a wrist rest, quote-unquote, is, well, ridiculous. Now, I'm not going to criticize the lack of um, colors on this, because it does offer a lot of the colors. Sure, the color white is more like a pink, but, you know, I'm not going to hold that against this keyboard. Um... But still, um, I do wish that this um, keyboard can natively do the color orange and stuff like that without me having to wait for it. But that's not too much of a con. It's something I'm a little bit um, head-scratching on, but at the same time, though, this keyboard still offers full uh, color in it. So full RGB regardless of that little hiccup. So I'm not going to put that as a con. It's sort of like in the middle, but it's not a con per se is just something that is a little bit annoying rather than something I'm going to put as a strike against this keyboard. So, um, if I had to give this keyboard, though, a final rating, it would be a 9 out of 10. Um, yeah, it's just pretty darn good. Um, the only thing holding it back is the crappy instructions. Uh, seriously, that's the only real major strikes against this keyboard. I mean... You're getting a lot for your value, though. Um, you know, um, a lot of cool function keys built into the keyboard, such as the um, 
um, you know, macro keys and the uh, media keys. You know, both of those things put this keyboard higher than some of the uh, keyboards that cost twice as much as it. You know, there are uh, keyboards out there that are six, two hundred dollars out there. They don't, they don't have this kind of functionality. So, you know, it puts things into perspective. You know, that if a little Chinese company can give you this amount of features for so little money, you're wondering what you're really paying for. And say, like a Corsair or a Razer keyboard, you're wondering um, where is my money going to? Oh wait, it's because I bought a, a Corsair or a Razer. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, sorry Corsair, sorry Razer. I think you should start learning lessons from your little competitors. Just because, you know, you charge $170 for your keyboards doesn't make them the best thing in the world. Especially when they need extra software and or don't offer, um, you know, things like uh, macro keys out of the box. You know, there's some really naughty behavior. I mean, granted, this keyboard does not have uh, a few feature to, features that those higher-end keyboards do do have, such as if you have a... It, this doesn't um, have a USB output on the back. Um, this does not have um, audio jacks on the back. So if you want those sort of things on your keyboard, well, you're a little bit out of luck with that. But still, you know, those two things I think I'm willing to sacrifice for the amount of things this keyboard still gives me regardless. You know, the macro keys and media keys and the amount of customization I could do that, do without the uh, uh, need for extra software is all big bonus points for this keyboard. I would highly recommend it. Uh, $64 United States is pretty fair for a keyboard. Um, there are membrane keyboards that are that high in price. And um, there are mechanical keyboards about the same amount of money. I did have a bit of a debate between this and several other model models, but this was the keyboard that seemed to have the most bang for the buck. So that feature set alone, you know, the, the, what this key keyboard was able to give me for the amount of, I was able to pay for it, well, I think you're seeing why I chose this keyboard. The fact it gives me so many things that I could make use of, like the macro keys and the media keys. So yeah, uh, $65 United States, not a bad investment. Even if the um, keys themselves even go bad after a while, I'm not going to be afraid to replace the keys. Uh, the key, um, the actual keys themselves, the switches, pull out the switches and replace them. I would so totally keep on trying to keep this uh, keyboard up and maintained. You know, as long as I could actually perform that operation. That's actually pretty cool. I mean, this did come with a key puller, so it does have some support, and I'm sure I could probably remove these switches with some um, nudging and instructions on the internet. I have not done that before, but I'm sure it's something I can do. So, um, but definitely would buy this keyboard again in a heartbeat if this keyboard decided to die within the next 18 months. I would so totally get it again because it's well worth it. Um, $65, I think, is a very good amount of money to put on a piece of equipment like this, especially with very good build quality. You know, I actually feel like I'm buying into the build quality of the of the um, mach machinery here, rather than just some brand that slapped your sticker on it and c make you pay, like, $800 for it, or whatever. So, um, yeah, that's what I think feel about the, um... Red Dragon Indra Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Overall fantastic. Um, again, I will be seeing you here soon. I'm going to be starting my first Let's Play. I've actually chosen my first Let's Play series and what I'm going to be doing, and hopefully I'm going to be doing that here within a week or so. I haven't exactly chosen the time yet, but I have chosen the title, and you will see my first Let's Play start on this uh, channel. So I'll see you then. And... Um, yeah, until until that time, I'll see you around, and bye-bye uh, for now.